What is representation, and why is it such an important concept in media studies? A representation is how something is portrayed in the media. It is a presentation to the mind in the form of an idea or image. What is gender, and what are some of the stereotypes associated with gender? Gender is whether someone is male or female. The way in which they are portrayed in the media is near opposite. A stereotype is a commonly held public belief about specific social groups or types of individuals. In the case of men, they are portrayed as powerful, controlled, and intelligent. Women, however, are depicted as emotionally weak, submissive physical objects. This can be problematic because if this patriarchal idea is shoved down people's throats, people will begin to believe it. The struggle to even begin to get over sexism was immense because of the media. It is very much. Two steps forward, one step back. What magazine have you looked at in your investigation? Who owns it, and what does it claim to offer audiences? I have been studying Sugar magazine. It is owned by Hachette Filipaki. On the Sugar website, they give links to other magazines they own similar to Sugar, such as Red. This is for an older audience. So when you grow out of Sugar, there is still a magazine to guide. You dot sugar magazine conforms to all the stereotypes of men and women. We proved this by looking at the magazine. We found 48 of the images in sugar's issue published April 29th implied women were physical objects, while only seven showed them as strong slash intelligent slash rational. Sugar uses the uses and gratifications theory. From the media, many people hope to gain personal identity, so sugar uses this, showing people how to behave, what to buy, and who to like. Sugar shows women how to be and what is fashionable. Sugar also offers entertainment and information for the readers, such as celebrity news, quizzes, and games. What identity does the magazine create for young women, and how does it achieve it? Sugar tries to create the stereotypical woman. She is beautiful, heterosexual, submissive, obsessed with men, uninterested in education, consumed by fashion and youth. This is done by filling the pages with the idea that this is what is important. It shows women who appear to have this ideal and worships them. Often, celebrities who are seen to have the stereotypical ideal of a woman are shown because, by implication, Sugar is telling you, "Read this, and it will make you a success like this celebrity." Do your findings suggest that Sugar magazine for young women simply reinforces gender stereotypes? What evidence from your content analysis supports this? Sadly, I believe it does. The identity Sugar creates is near identical to those of the stereotypical woman. The ideas are simply patriarchal. For example, through the amount of columns in the magazine talking about how to get a man, tells women they are the weaker gender and should concern themselves with nothing more than how to attract the stronger gender, because they need a man as they cannot handle themselves. This idea of reinforcing stereotypes is also shown through how shallow the whole magazine tells women they should not aspire to any depth within their life. Throughout the magazine, there is no evidence of women being on any level independent or strong. What other media does Sugar engage with its audience? Sugar offers a free online website, SugarScope. This website offers escapism. It is primarily advertising the magazine Sugar. So the context is very similar to the magazine. It is largely celebrity gossip. The home page is almost completely devoted to it. However, it also includes polls, music, men, and a fashion. Dot. The color scheme is pink, black, and white. This identifies its audience as teenage girls through this use of color, as this is a very feminine, girly combination. How is this an example of sugar becoming more convergent? It is an excellent example because it offers a large variety of different media, such as videos and interactive games. It also connects to Facebook and Twitter. This encourages people to talk to each other, so sugar becomes more of a social activity. This is advantageous to sugar because it uses the two-step flow theory. Does the website simply reinforce or challenge gender stereotypes? It does indeed. However, whilst the magazine predominantly on fashion and men, the website is far more preoccupied with celebrities. So, despite the fact both the website and the magazine are engrossed in enforcing the stereotype of women, they focus on different areas of the stereotype. As the website looks at how shallow women's interests are, whilst the magazine looks at women as physical objects.
In your opinion, what impact might the gender identity created through the Sugar magazine and through the Sugar Scope website have on audiences? None, or very little in the magazine alone. There is in fact, in my opinion nothing wrong with having interests such as these and we cannot condemn those who do as, reinforcing an awful stereotype. However when this is the only image available to teenagers, then the impact can be made, and as it happens the idea that sugar presence is within most media, this is problematic as it projects an incorrect stereotype about all women when it only reflects the interests of a few. If people start to believe this then it limits the options of women who are not constantly emotional or interested in fashion because those in charge would believe they are. Those in charge are primarily men. So with the bombardment of this stereotype we are risking a patriarchal society.